Hello everyone, happy Saturday. It's Labor Day and I'm hoping to help some of you get over the procra ooh, procrastinating, there we go, uh, that you've been putting off on getting some projects done, much like I have. Do you guys remember these chairs? I know some of you do. <laughs> I started these for Thanksgiving last year. Yep, it's been a while. I've got a few of them done, if you can see over there. There's a couple of them done. Out of six, I've got two and a half more to go. And I'm determined to get them done before this Thanksgiving. So hopefully you guys have your projects ready and you will paint along with me. We're gonna clean, we're gonna do the whole process here. And hopefully that uh, motivates some of you guys to get started. So here we go. All right, let's see if I can brighten things up a little bit there. Hello, Anne. Okay, so we are gonna start with the cleaning process. This seems to be the process that I think most people are scared about, um, but it's a great place. Obviously, it's the place you have to start, but it's a great way to get yourself over the hump. So once you get through that cleaning process, you feel like, well, I've done it now, I've gotta go, right? I've gotta keep going. Yes, Janice, the chair still, absolutely. So these are the new deglosser jars. Some of you are probably already receiving them. Super excited about these. Now, I'm gonna use my handy dandy Butter Knife, AKA screwdriver here in Kentucky and pop this lid and then I'm ready to go. Set that aside. I'm gonna use a chip brush here, but you can definitely definitely use your Syntec chalk brush if you have one. Uh, the only downside to that is you're gonna have to wait so for it to dry before you can start painting unless you have more than one, which is always a good idea. If you can see, I've got a trash bag down here on my floor as my drop cloth because for me, hauling out a big old drop cloth just feels like a whole lot of work, and I'm not about that. Grabbing a trash bag from under the sink feels pretty easy, and like I can go ahead and get this done. But I do need to protect my floor. You can see I'm working right here in my dining room. Not doing anything crazy if I had to drag this outside to the garage or anything like that. Probably not gonna happen again. All right, so I'm gonna put on a good liberal amount, as you can see here. I wanna see it kind of suds up. These chairs are curvy and have lots of nooks and crannies to them, so I've got to get in all of these places. I'm just going to start with putting it on. These chairs are some kind of, I'm guessing, like a fruit wood, a blondish color wood, and we're going to be painting them with Coliseum. So I'm going to be talking to you about painting with whites. We're going to do brush and stipple. So I know we show brush and roll a lot, and it works great. But I originally learned with brush and stipple, and I'm a creature of habit, so we're gonna do brush and stipple today. Now, both work great, both give you the same results. You just gotta find the technique that works best for you and your particular project. Sometimes I do change it up, sometimes I do brush and roll. It really depends on the piece. Now, these chairs have lots of little, little spots in them, not a whole lot of big flat spots. So I know I'm gonna have to get out my true applicator from Mental Trio anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with the true applicator. Go ahead and knock out the front here. So I'm gonna get the whole front of this chair done real fast. Let this deglosser start doing some work for me. So I wanna hear from you. What project have you been putting off? And hopefully we can inspire you to put the paint to it today. That's the goal. It's just paint. So many people are so afraid of it. Something happens, it goes haywire. You can always that little reset button and repaint it, no big deal. Get the backs of the legs. All right, so I've got a good liberal coat of deglosser on. Make sure I hit that spot, I think I did. All right, so it's set a minute now, right? So I've got my green scrubby. It's just part of a little sponge here. I'm gonna use the green side and I'm gonna start scrubbing. I'm gonna stand up here so I can put a little bit of elbow grease behind it here. And I'm just gonna give it a scrub. Not doing anything too crazy. Oh, so it's sitting in my sponge for me. But I am trying to actually clean it. So give everything a good scrub. All the areas we just hit with the deglosser. Making sure you get down in, if you have a detail like this, you want to get down in there, really hit it. It's okay if some of your existing color or varnish comes off because we're gonna be cleaning it or painting it anyways, right? And we know if the surface layer is coming off a little bit, then any gunk and grime that is on there is also coming off. So 
gonna kind of push the edge of my sponge right into these grooves on the legs, if you can see that. That is a great place where oil likes to hang out and wants to cause us problems on our paint adhering. So we gotta get in there and get that. So you can see the cleaning part's not really hard. To me, it's the hardest part about painting with the all-in-one paint. But that's because I'm really not that fond of cleaning in general. Yet somehow when I work with Paula, I always am the one that ends up doing it. How does that happen? I always try to encourage her to show the cleaning more on lives so that she has to do it instead of me. <laughs> it's only fair she has to do it every once in a while, right? Okay, and I've left my rag over there. I forgot I needed it for this step too. How am I doing? Just one second. Real life painting in the house. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take a clean, dry rag and just wipe down what I've done. Because this declosser does not need deactivation, I don't have to do anything else. I'm done at this point, I'm ready to paint. And because I'm wiping it down, I'm getting all the stuff that the declosser has broken up, I'm getting it off of my piece. Don't wanna paint over that, obviously. You can see I'm not getting a whole lot off. These were fairly clean, which, uh, Considering I am not the world's best housekeeper, it's quite impressive to me. So just keep clean in here. Almost done. Making sure you get all the grooves, if your piece has any. And there you go. It's literally that simple. Now what I want you to do at this step, this defoster somewhere, but I won't knock it over, because clumsy me will. Okay, what I want you to do at this step is I want you to fill your piece, okay? I want you to rub your hand on it like that. You should feel some resistance, some drag. It shouldn't feel slick. Your hand shouldn't be like whoop. You should kind of feel some, some drag to it, right? That's how you know you got your piece good and clean. If you have a spot where you feel like it's still pretty slick or not even so much slick, but that it feels greasy. I mean, we all know what that feels like, right? then you're gonna hit it again. Some pieces do require more than one cleaning. Um, you just have to feel it and know. Now, if I were doing my kitchen cabinets, for example, I've got cabinets that go all the way into my eating kitchen area. Those probably not as dirty. Probably gonna give them one cleaning. The ones above my stove, probably pretty nasty. They're probably gonna require two or three cleanings. So you just have to kind of judge it and feel it. You can feel the difference. Okay, so. Now that we've got our piece good and clean, we are ready to paint. So we get so many questions about how long after I've cleaned it, uh, can I paint it? Now, <laughs> it's literally that fast. We've just wiped it clean and it's ready to go. So I'm using the beautiful color Coliseum. You guys know I have this throughout my home. It's my favorite white. And we are gonna start up here in the back. I've got my handy dandy couple of tools here. Let me show you, I've got my true applicator. So we're gonna do brush and then we're gonna do the stipple. And I'm also going to use a little bottle of water with a mister. See what I mean by mister? It's not a harsh spray, but a soft just of water. And this one is nothing fancy. I just got it in a little travel kit that I got at Target for like three bucks. I have zero use for the other things in here because I don't travel. <laughs> but, and when I do, I don't take stuff with me that I don't take it on the airplane with me, I guess I check it. So I just got this little bottle out of it, but it is gonna be well worth it because this is how I'm gonna get my white super, super smooth. Okay, so we're gonna start. I'm gonna start by dipping in my Syntec chalk brush and I'm gonna dip in about a third of the way. And I'm gonna offload one side. So you've heard us say, you gotta put on a liberal coat of paint with a fully loaded brush. That's what we mean. We're not offloading this side. We're not doing this. So many people do this, this, this. They're trying to preserve this paint, but they're really costing themselves a lot more coat. So now they're basically dry brushing when they've done that. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna dip in, offload one side. And we're gonna start putting the paint to it. So I'm gonna start in the part that I know I'm gonna like the least, right? Like doing the least. So I'm gonna start in this middle section because it looks the least fun to me. And that's where I have to start to get it done. Does so anybody else like that? Gotta start with the hardest part so then it doesn't get that out of the way, so it doesn't feel like such a chore. 
right. I'm gonna use my brush, get in here inside all these little nooks and crannies. I'm not really worrying about direction of the paint. I'm just getting it on, getting it smoothed out, spread out here so I have enough. So I'm working kind of this little center section. I've kind of quadrant this off in my mind, right? This whole little inner back part is what I'm going for here. Now the first part, first coat we do call the ugly coat. You can see why. It's not supposed to be pretty at this point. Although here in a minute when we do the stipple, it's gonna be a lot better than what it is for sure. Go ahead and hit that part too while we're here. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna start with the stipple part. And take my true applicator and then give it two mists of water so you can see there's really there's no water dripping off of it I can squeeze it it really actually doesn't even feel wet I can feel just a light light dampness to it I'm gonna hit it again since I just drunk my hand all over it okay now I'm gonna start stippling you guys know you've heard me talk about stippling before it's a very happy process let me take you in closer here and see if you can see me a little better here there we go so we're just lightly tapping just light 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 happy 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 tap and i can twist this true applicator and get in all these little grooves making sure i don't have any pulling of the paint now these chairs do have quite a bit of grain or texture to them. I like that about them and I'm gonna antique these with the Weathered Wood Antiquing Gel. So that's gonna show really nicely. Now, if you've got cabinets and you don't want that, you may need to use a grain filler. That is a product we do not sell, but one you can get it online or probably at your local hardware store. But what I would encourage you to do is paint a cabinet door first and see, sometimes paint really can camouflage I'm gonna kind of try to manipulate my trap cater here and get in. May have to come at it from the back. Got a little bit of pulling in there I don't like. Uh, sometimes paint can camouflage grain enough that you don't have to do that extra step. Taking a grain filler to all of your cabinets is a fair amount of work. So let's make sure you really need it before we go doing that. So I'm just gonna stipple with my brush just to get in that little area where I can't get my true applicator. Okay, that little area one more time. And now I'm gonna leave this area alone and I'm gonna go on to another area. But you can see I don't really have much paint on my true applicator, just a little bit. We're gonna go on to another section. So I'm gonna dip back in. And now I'm gonna go up here to the top. And I'm gonna do this little section and then I'm gonna stipple it. Again, I'm gonna kind of pounce or stipple the paint into these details just to make sure I get down in all of those nooks and crannies because I don't want any area to be left unpainted. You can see I'm dipping back into my brush twice even on this little spot here because I want to make sure I've got a decent amount of paint on the surface. The paint needs paint to level into. Now when I'm painting chairs, I'm not gonna worry so much about this part here because the cushion's obviously gonna cover that. And if you saw our live probably from almost a year ago at this point, you know Paula covered those for me with a paint drop cloth and I'll show them to you here at the end. Really inexpensive way to do it. I bought one drop cloth and we covered all six chair bottoms. And they just formed house these chairs right up for me. You can see the table behind me here. That's my dining table. And I intend to leave it wood. I am gonna take the gel stain to it because it has a scratch on the top. I bought all of these pieces used and separately. So what I did to get these chairs, chairs are really hard to find on Facebook Marketplace. Like really, really hard to find. At a decent price, six chairs, right? All right, so I've got my triplicator. I'm gonna give my little two spritzes. I do that every time I'm gonna go in. So what I was able to do was, I found these chairs for sale with a table on Facebook Marketplace, and I could tell they didn't match the table they were with. 
So I just reached out to the lady and asked her if she would be willing to sell me the chairs separately. Now, she was selling the table of chairs at a pretty good deal. Honestly, I would have paid that amount for the chairs themselves. But I just asked her if she would be willing to sell them separate, and if so, how much? And she gave me a price, and I jumped right on it. So that's a great way to get chairs. If you're having a hard time finding them, you're looking for used chairs, try to find ones that are in a mismatched set and see if they'll sell them to you separate. Most likely they will. And this lady was so nice. Got a little run there I'm gonna hit. I'm always looking for runs, especially on a detailed piece like this. Runs can happen, right? So we gotta watch for them, because once they dry, they are no joke. But this lady was so nice, she even delivered it for me for $25. I was so excited. I couldn't take her up on it fast enough. Okay, I'm gonna hit this little back section now. Hopefully you're painting along with me. If you've got questions, ask them. We'll take a break here in just a second and get your questions. Now, I know I probably got some runoff on the back, and that's okay, because I'm gonna get to it pretty quickly here. All right, painted that little section, little spritz. This is just water that's in my little mister bottle. And I'm doing just a light little tap. And what this is doing is just kind of like blending the paint. So if any of you use liquid foundation, I got a little run there, I see you don't like. If any of you use liquid foundation, you might use one of those little makeup sponges to blend your foundation with. Kind of the same concept. Do we see any other runs? Nope, okay. Always on the lookout, I hate runs. That's just nothing ruins it faster than after it's already dried and hardened and then you find a run, right? Okay, let's see if I can lower you down here a little bit. We can work on the bottom of the chair. Yes, I'm using Coliseum is the white and this is coat one. So you can see we're getting pretty good coverage. Now this is a light wood, so I'm expecting to get this in two coats. If this were a darker wood, it might get three coats. Now, I'm also getting a little bit less coverage because I am using water on my chew applicator. So I might cost myself a coat, let's just say. But I know I'm getting it super, super smooth. So to me, that's worth it. I know a lot of people are really intimidated by whites because they do take extra coats. There's just no way around that. I don't care what kind of paint you're using. I am, I've told this story before, I am one of the few people in my family that like painting interior doors. Well, I wouldn't say I like it. Let's say I don't hate it. So, I usually get that job. And when you're refreshing a whole house full of interior doors, white over white, it takes two coats. White over white takes two coats. You would never think it, but it does. And I promise you, I speak from a lot of experience that it does take two coats. So, we shouldn't really expect white over black, for example, to also happen in two coats, or white over a dark walnut wood. It's not gonna happen in two coats, guys. It's gonna take a little bit more. Now, if you'll do the techniques that we show, the brush and roll or the brush and stipple that we're doing today, you'll get it in a lot less coats than you would if you weren't doing that technique. It's also gonna help you get it super smooth, because you don't want your piece to look painted, especially your kitchen cabinets, right? I think that's our fear, and one of the reasons we put off projects like that is because we're afraid it's not gonna look good. We're afraid it's gonna look painted. It's gonna look like it has brush strokes and all that good stuff that will maybe make us not look like the professionals we really want to be, right? So we need a little spritz, and back to the stove. So every time, every time I pick up my chew applicator, I give it a little spritz, and I give it a little happy tap. Tap, 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 tap. Places where people go wrong is they do this. I swear I know some of you are out there stippling like that. I know you've been mad or something that day, or you're frustrated at the piece, or somebody, or something, and you're pounding away on the stuff. You can't do that. It's gotta be a light tap. We're not trying to create texture. We're just trying to pick up the paint and redistribute it and blend away any brush strokes. Make it pretty. All right, so we got the whole front of the chair done in just a few minutes. Now, I'm gonna rotate here. The other reason I like using 
trash bags as they rotate pretty easy. All right. And we're gonna go on to the side here. So just continuing on, hopefully you're painting along with me. Just want you to see how fast you can get this done. Now, I am in a new quart of Coliseum because I did take my other one to work to paint one of these chairs and it got uh, lost in the shuffle there at work and used up by some other projects. But it has taken me less than a quart. I'm realistically about halfway through a quart and I've got three chairs totally done and one half done. And now this one that's about to be half done. I call coat one halfway through. So it doesn't take much. So let's talk about how much paint you need. Now, a quart of paint is gonna do a good size project, something like six dining chairs, something like an apartment sized kitchen's worth of cabinets. Now, if I'm painting a white, I might anticipate that it might take a little more. Now again, this is a light colored wood, so it's not gonna take me a bunch of coats. So the normal rules apply. If this were dark walnut, I'm painting it white. I would plan that it's gonna take a little more, maybe a quart and a pint to do six dining chairs, maybe a quart and a little more to do an apartment sized kitchen. Now, most kitchens, normal sized kitchens, I'm gonna say are gonna take two quarts of paint. Again, if I'm doing a white, maybe a little more, probably a little more. Give it a little mist. I wanna make sure I'm kind of turning away here and I'm not, I don't wanna mist directly onto my paint. Okay, always mist your tools, not your paint, not your surface. Got the little dog hair there because we're painting in real life, right? Just have to be on the lookout and grab it. Now this paint does have very little odor. I am painting right here inside my home. The dogs are downstairs in the basement but no smells. And the great thing about it is, unlike traditional house paints, it doesn't gas off. Do you know what I mean by that? You know how when you paint a room, your house feels or smells like paint for a good while? This paint's not like that. Once it's dry, it's done. But literally, I smell nothing being this close to it. Making sure I get all the backs of everything. All right, what do you guys think so far? Okay, so Sharon wants to know why I'm misting. So Sharon, I am misting just so I can get a super smooth finish because whites do sometimes tend to show a little more texture and I wanna make sure it's super, super smooth. So I'm giving just a really light mist. So this is not a hard uh, spray of water. It's just a little poof, poof of water, right? And it's just regular old uh, tap water. Nothing crazy. Jill Lynn says she hasn't painted anything in her life and now she wants to paint everything. It's so easy, that's right. That's what I love about it. I'm the same way, I've never been a painter. I hated painting walls. The thought of even painting furniture just sounded dreadful to me. Um, but this makes it so easy and I feel so accomplished when I'm done, right? I love it and I love the feeling that my house, ha my, that my home has now. So again, I'm not worrying when I'm painting chairs, I'm not worrying about getting in here because the cushion's gonna cover this. Now, if I were painting these to sell, I'd probably paint in there, but I'm painting these for my home and uh, God help my family if they come in and flip my chairs over. Uh, they should know better than that, right? Okay, so let's see. I've gotten off of my trash bag here, so I'm gonna have to reach under here and get myself back on here, back situated. Okay, I'm gonna rotate, I got one more side and then we're done. We are done with coat one. And truthfully, this part that we started with up here is about dry. So by the time we get this other side done, we're gonna be able to go ahead and go on to coat two and just knock this baby out. So, let me rotate here. Now obviously, if I weren't trying to do this for the camera, actually what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come around. That'd be easier. That's how we would do it in real life. We just get up and move. So let's just get up and move. 
Ignore any messes that you see in this house, please. There's a good chance there's gonna be a dust ball of dog hair go by or something. Okay. All right, on to the last side, we're almost done. doesn't take long to knock out projects. So one of the things you can do if you're painting chairs, you could go ahead, hit coat one on one, and go right on to the next one. Maybe try to get coat one done on all of them, and then maybe come back the next day and do coat two. Or if you're feeling really froggy, go right back into doing coat two. God bless you if you've got that kind of energy. I wish I did. The other thing I typically do is I go ahead and clean them all at one time. Unfortunately, I've cleaned these things several times because I keep putting it off, but I would, if I were gonna sit here and paint them all, I would clean them all first, all at one time. Something about that process just makes it feel like, okay, all the prep is done, I'm ready to go, this is gonna feel easy now. The cleaning part is what feels the most tedious to me. I always have to knock that out and that kind of signifies to my brain that I am done and the hard stuff's over and it's just gonna be fun and easy from here on out. The other thing I think is that people are just so scared to put that first little bit of paint onto the piece. I think you just gotta do it. You just gotta accidentally just, just go and get it over with, right? Now it's done and you've got no choice but to go on. Silly as that sounds, just that fear of putting that paint on it holds people back. It's just paint. We can always repaint it. Hold on just one second, I left my mister over here. I gotta move you back here so I can reach. We can always undo it. We could strip it if we really, really had to, if it was a total disaster, total fail, right? Um, but we can always just paint right over it. It's super easy. No problem to paint over the all-in-one paint. You just want to let it dry, paint it again. I don't think that happens very often, but just so you had that peace of mind to know that you could. You can see I am going over it sometimes a little more than once, but I'm staying in my small areas. Now that I'm done over here, I'm not going back over there. I'm letting that fully dry. Just going ahead and stippling out some runs that happened on the back here earlier before they completely dry. So it's definitely not a good idea to do one side and not the other. Just go ahead and get one whole side done at a time or one whole coat, coat done. Okay. Let's see if I can take you around to the back here with me a little bit. I want you to see the whole process in the real time that it takes. Hold on just a second. Here we go. Ignore all my setup here of setting up for Facebook here. There we go. So you can see, a little messy in the back from where I was working before. That's okay. It's not dry completely yet. So I've got time to go in and fix it here. So, same process. paint to it, and then we're gonna mist and stipple. A little more paint on. Make sure I get it down in this detail here. Paying attention, making sure if I didn't get the sides on the front that I'm getting the sides and little bits now. Watching for any runs, of course. All right. Grab my mister. Mist. And step. I know it's a lot of the same repeat, but that's the process. And once you get it down, it's super easy. 
So I encourage you, start with a practice piece. If you intend to paint your kitchen cabinets, maybe starting right off with your kitchen cabinets, especially if you're wanting to paint them white, maybe not the greatest idea. Can be done for sure. It's not like you need a lot of experience to do this. You really don't. But I would probably start with a practice piece. So I think people are a little less intimidated by starting with bathroom vanities. That's a good place to start. A chair, maybe not one as curvy as this, for your first one right out of the gate. Um, a little nightstand or an end table, little accent piece for your foyer. Those are all great places to start. Get your technique down, especially if you're doing a white. First thing you need to do is figure out what technique works for you. Does brush and roll work for you better? Does brush and stipple work for you? A combination of the two? Just brush, who knows? It could be any of those things. But I will tell you, the right tools and the right techniques make all the difference in how many coats a white takes. So like I said, we are gonna get this totally in two coats. If I just brushed, it might take me a little bit more. All right, so we're gonna come down here, get these legs out, we're almost done. What do you guys think? I've got one over here that's done and dry. Would you guys like to see antiquing gel on it? That'll be super fast. And does anybody know who won the Derby? Did anybody watch it? I didn't think when I scheduled this live. It's so weird to me that the Derby is in September. I just totally forgot about it. This weirdo world we're in right now. Just uh, feels so odd. There's no spectators at the Derby. There was a gorgeous sunrise. I posted the picture on our Facebook page. Take a look at that if you missed it. There was the most gorgeous, colorful sunrise. It looked like God was painting a beautiful picture over the track this morning to uh, lighten the spirits for those who were really disappointed. You know, here in Kentucky, it's something people really look forward to going to. So I know there's a lot of people that are really bummed today. So let's see if we can up here to this top a little bit real quick. These chairs pretty. I think I got all six for $200, I think. They're real wood. They were in good shape. They had a little bit of, little bit of wear on them, but I was painting them anyway, so not a big deal. And nothing major, just a little bit in the varnish, nothing that had to be sanded or anything, as you know. That does not sound like fun to me. Just hitting a few spots here, see I missed, getting under here. These are the parts on chairs that's easy to miss up under. That's why Paula always starts with them upside down. I just don't have anywhere good upside down to put mine. All right, little spritz and a little tap. And you guys can see I've got you up pretty close here. Now, you can see a little bit of the wood grain come through, but look how smooth that paint is. That is smooth. Now, again, this is coat one, and this is still very wet, obviously, because I just painted it, so it's gonna dry out just beautiful. Now, up in here, you can see, where is it that way? I've missed a little spot there. I can't get to that with my brush very good without running a lot of paint over the other side. So I'm gonna let this completely dry, and then I'm gonna come back with a little artist brush and get in these grooves where I miss it. Actually, I might just hit it with my finger. I just accidentally did and I decided I'm gonna go for that. Why not? A little finger painting there. Never hurt anybody. All right, but I do still need to get up in the top a little bit more. So I will go back with a little artist brush. Now, before I call coat one completely done, or before I call this side completely done even, I'm going to see if I've got any runs. So I'm gonna give it a little glance here. I'm always on the lookout for runs. Ones are the first thing to give away that your piece is painted, maybe not so greatly. And the all-in-one paint is so durable, you don't wanna let it run dry and harden. Now, if you get it pretty quickly, you'll be all right. If, uh, if you don't notice it till the next day, which happened to me on my vanity cabinet that I also painted in um, Coliseum, it's just, the run is just there. It's just gonna have to live there. Now, luckily it was kind of up under the lip of the sink, so 
not that big of a deal. So let me see if I can answer some questions for you guys. There's my one that's finished that we're gonna try to antique here. So let's see, go inside to the left. I'm gonna go back into it. I don't wanna go back into it right now because it's still wet and I don't wanna create texture in my super smooth finish. So when I miss a spot like that or something that doesn't get as great of a coverage, I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna get it on coat too. It's gonna drive you guys crazy though, I can see, isn't it? <laughs> I don't blame you. Okay, let's see. If I can answer any questions for you. Julie, I hope you will come see us. I hope that when all this craziness is over, um, we can have everybody down to Taylorsville and see the new facility and visit with us and um, all that good stuff. So we're really looking forward to it. You know, we're building a, an event space slash storefront so that you guys can come visit us when all this craziness is over. Uh, Alyssa, this is the first coat, absolutely. Okay, we are gonna do the antiquing gel. Um, Jessica, I can promise you this paint does not scratch off easily. These other chairs, there you go, you can see them over there, um, have been painted for almost a year. I've had many family gatherings. Um, my family is not overly kind to my pieces, so they are holding up well. If you can see that piece back there behind that chair, that is one we did on a Facebook Live. Does anybody remember that? It was the cappuccino with the weathered wood over it, and then Paula painted the handles with the gold. Really, really pretty piece. It was so pretty, I said, that's gotta go home with me. Um, it's over there, so lots of pieces that you've seen us paint on lives are actually in our homes, and uh, obviously we wouldn't have something in our homes that wasn't holding up well. Didn't look good, right? So, let me set this aside here. And I'm gonna bring you over here, and let's antique this chair. So I can say I have one more done, then I will have four done. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay, this poor, these chairs have been a process for me. I'm just, not that I don't enjoy the process of painting, just for some reason, something about doing chairs just feels so tedious to me. I can't imagine doing it with regular uh, paint and having to sand and prime, then paint, then wax. Oh my gosh, if I had to wax these chairs. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, let's see if we can get to a spot here where we can do this. Working in my dining room here, so we got it. Finagle around the space. Let me raise you up a little bit. There we go. If you guys can see my walls painted there in the background a little bit, those are painted Mediterranean. All right, so I've got my weathered wood antiquing gel. I've got myself another Syntec chalk brush. Because this again is why I always keep two handy. Because when I'm in the mood, I can't stop and be waiting for a brush to dry. All right, so same kind of process. Now, this feels really, really scary because you've got this beautiful pristine white, and now we're about to slather gray all over it. Weathered wood is a beautiful grayish color. It's a warm gray, so you can see I've got oaky colored floor, so I can't go with cool tones in my home. That was really my initial plan, and I really wanted like cobblestone and cathedral, and I wanted these cooler tone grays. Ooh, isn't that scary? That always makes my heart stop a little bit when I add, when I kind of feel like I'm dirty and something up. But that was the color scheme I really, really wanted, but my floors just would not allow it. And my budget would not allow me to change out those floors. So I had to work with what I had. So that's another thing, you know, when you're planning out your kitchen, these are things you gotta think about. You know, if your countertops are a certain color, mine right now have a heavy amount of black in them. I don't love them and I will eventually replace them. But right now, those are the countertops I have. So even though I absolutely love the thought of having Mediterranean cabinets, and one day, I fully intend to, it's not gonna happen with those black countertops. So you just have to keep those things in mind. So we're just gonna slather a good coat. Again, we're gonna kinda quadrant this off here. I'm gonna do this little inside bit. And what I'm making sure I'm doing as I'm putting on the antiquing gel is that I am getting in these grooves of this chair because that is where this antiquing gel is really gonna hang out and live. Okay, I'm gonna take a dry rag, try to find a little clean bit here, and I'm gonna remove in a circular motion. Now the antiquing gel is really forgiving. It's not super grabby like wax. If you've ever used antiquing wax before, this is so not that. It's so much easier. You can see it just glides right on. It's gliding right off. 
and I'm just leaving it behind in the detail of that chair. Can you see how that brought that out? Gave it a little bit of personality. What do you guys think of that? Do we like it with the antiquing? Now, I am gonna use my finger and kind of get in some of these little areas here because I don't want a big heavy pile of the weathered wood in there. Don't want it to look like it got really dirty in there. I'm not a fan of super heavy antiquing. I like mine pretty light. So you just keep going, you remove as little or as much as you want. If you like heavy antiquing, leave it on there heavy. You do still need to wipe it back, but you don't have to wipe it back as much as I've wiped it back. Now, let's say you did this and you just hated it. You just thought, oh, that looks dirty. Because antiquing is not for everybody and that's okay. Or maybe one spot did get a little grabby for some reason. And it doesn't match the other pieces or the other sections. Add a little water to your bag, remove a little bit more. It's that easy. Again, that little misting tool works great for that. Now you do wanna wait. Now this chair has actually been painted for quite a while, but if you do not want to distress your piece, meaning I don't wanna remove paint and go back to that original blondish colored wood, then I'm gonna wait about 48 hours between painting and antiquing. If I do wanna to attempt to do some wet distressing, then as soon as this chair is dry, I could go ahead and antique it. Does that make sense? All right, now I'm gonna stipple with my brush here into that detail because I wanna make sure I've got antiquing gel all down in those grooves because I wanna make sure that it gets left behind there. So again, find me a little semi-clean section of my rag here. And I'm gonna remove it in a circular motion. Kinda like the Karate Kid, wax on, wax off. Look at that, isn't that pretty? You almost couldn't even see that before. It's really, really subtle, which is the way I want it. Again, you could leave yours on heavier, going in and cleaning up a little bit there. But it just lightly tones this white down, so it's not so intensely white. I don't have a lot of super bright white pieces in my home, and I don't want these chairs to stand out like sore thumbs, right? especially since I don't intend to paint the table. So I'm gonna have white chairs and this dark walnut-y colored table. So if these chairs were super stark white, they would be glowing neon over here. All right, so one little section at a time. Brush on that antiquing gel. Wipe it down. Now that's a big flat surface, big long stroke. So I can just, don't have to do that in a circular motion. But if you were doing like a tabletop, for example, you will always want to stay in that circular motion. Okay, clean up down at the bottoms. Bottoms are usually where it's gonna get messy or any little overrun there where you've hit the next side. Okay, and I'm gonna literally do the entire piece. So even though some of the surfaces may not have details where this is gonna really, really hang out, it's still gonna to tone all the paint just slightly, and I want it to all match, right? On this one, I did, a, I did do the top a little bit more on this one. All right, so I'm gonna hit this whole little top frame here. I don't think any of this is gonna show, but I'm gonna hit it just because it's there. You can see me here. When we are done, we'll set the chair bottom back on it so you guys can see the whole deal. The chair bottoms turned out really, really cute. If you didn't hear me say it earlier, Paula was nice enough to recover them for me and teach me how to do it because I had never done it before. It was so easy. We literally took a drop cloth that I got at Home Depot, a burlapy looking drop cloth. I cut it up and we literally just stapled it right over. These chair bottoms originally had like that burgundy tapestry. You guys know that look I'm talking about that a lot of chairs have. And we just stapled right over it. And it looks like we took regular burlap and it's just a, a drop cloth, a paint drop cloth. And the great thing is I got a big one, so I have plenty of extra drop cloth left over. So if anybody were to 
dropped food or something and it's staying on my chair bottom, I've got plenty of drop cloth left over. Just go right over it. And because we are wiping this back, it's virtually dry when we're done. Now, it does have a little bit of, I'm gonna say stickiness for lack of a better word, for a little bit until it's fully dry. But I mean, these chairs are movable at this point. After I've wiped them back, of course. Just making sure if I hit a spot, I don't want any spot to get heavier than another. I wanna try to have to use your artistic eye here which is the most difficult part for me and just make sure you got it pretty even throughout. I'm gonna hit this little front part here and then we are done. That way I can show you a complete chair here. So what do you guys think? For those of you that haven't started yet, what is holding you back? What is the fear that we need to get past here of getting the paint on the piece? So, let's cover what we've talked about. For me, it's getting the cleaning done. Once I get that cleaning done, it kind of signifies to my brain that the hard part's over. So I get that cleaning done. And then you just gotta literally touch it with some paint. Cause then there's no going back and you can't sit there and keep psyching yourself out, which I think is something we as women do far too often. We're analytical and we sit here and we overthink it. But what if, what if it doesn't look as good as it does on Pinterest? What if I mess it up? What if it's full of brush strokes? But what if it's so pretty and it's everything you wanted it to be and you feel so accomplished when you're done? I mean, it's just paint, literally. There's no right or wrong way to do it. We can always go back and do it again. So there's no reason to be holding you back. Start with a little practice piece. Start with something simple. A little nightstand, a little end table. And get your technique down, especially if you're working with whites. I would definitely encourage you to have that practice piece if you're working with the whites. And we're using the weather hooding antiquing gel, just brushing it on, wiping it off. These are small areas, so I'm kind of doing these just straight. And if this were a tabletop or some big flat surface, like a big queen headboard or something, I would remove from those big flat areas in a circular motion, even here on the side of this leg. Even though I'm kind of going up and down, I am still doing a little light circular motion and leaving it behind in the grooves. I'm trying to look at it and make sure that it's even from one side to the next and from the bottom to the top that we did earlier. So, and then I'm looking over at my other chair and going, does it match? <laughs> does it match close enough? It's not gonna match perfect because I'm doing this by hand and I didn't do them at the same time because I'm a procrastinator just like everybody else. But. I can get it there. Okay, there we go. That one a little bit more. I'm gonna set the chair bottom on and back up here for you so you can see this thing. Tell me what you think. Let me grab a chair. Here are my super cute chair bottoms that Paula did for me. Isn't that cute? There we go. There's one chair antiqued, ready to go. I just gotta get Brian to screw the chair bottom back on. And I do have to antique the back. I will go back and do that. And here's one where we got coat one on it. I am so close to being done. Not, but eventually. I'm hoping by Thanksgiving. We had a mismatch Thanksgiving this past year. <laughs> some white chairs, some blonde chairs, but this year, I'm determined we are going to have all white chairs, and it's going to be gorgeous because this is my favorite room in my home. So you can see, um, I don't know if you remember, the lights are hitting it crazy, but that is a picture that 
Paula painted for me with a resin pour up there on the wall. Do you guys remember when we did that one? And those pictures, you can't see them there, but they are painted and they have uh, resin stencils on them and gold dust and all kinds of good stuff. They just look white from here in the camera. But those were done on a live. Let's see what else. Here's the beautiful piece. Let me just take it out and show you here real quick. Do you guys remember this piece? Isn't that gorgeous? Let me see if I can back up. Hold on, let me flip the camera around here real quick. There we go. Do you guys remember when Paula painted that piece? That is one of my favorite pieces. So I brought it here to be in my dining room to kind of be a little buffet. And I've got my grandma's china in it. But it's just cappuccino with the weathered wood. So you can see this is an example of putting the weathered wood on heavier and striping it to create that faux wood look. Uh, Nancy, I did not paint the fabric on the chairs. That was done uh, with burlap, a burlap drop cloth just stapled around it. Isn't that piece gorgeous, Linda? I remember when we did this, I was like, oh, that is something. So, that's it. And then this table, we still have to uh, hit with a walnut stain because it's got some scratches and imperfections on it. And then help me decide. Here's the bench that goes with it. So, obviously, I'm going to leave the top um, in the wood tone with the walnut stain, but should I paint the bottom? Should it be white to match the chairs? I can't decide. I feel like everything in my home is painted at this point, so I need some some wood tones to kind of anchor it down. So I, I'm leaning towards leaving it all wood, leaving it all stained, but I think I might paint it. I don't know. Are you guys indecisive like me when it comes to that? Yeah, Judy says match the bottoms. I thought my original plan was to paint the table legs and everything, but the more I look at it, I think I just like it the way it is. This table is so heavy, you guys. My husband was so mad at me about picking this thing up. Him and his friend Kyle did it for me and they were struggling. They said it's made out of an old pirate ship or something as heavy as it is, so. All right, well, there we are. I appreciate you guys joining this live with me. Um, I will go back and look for some more questions and see if I can help you guys out and get you guys started on these projects. You're gonna be so inspired if you will just put the paint on the piece. So um, just get yourself some deglosser, get yourself that tool trio and get yourself some paint. Don't forget about the sale that's going on for Labor Day. So $25 quart. So all of these chairs, one quart, six chairs, including two that have arms. And I can get that all done with a quart, even in white. So. $25, I can have a whole new dining set. How exciting is that? Um, An average size kitchen, two quarts, 50 bucks. And you can have a whole new kitchen. Maybe a hundred bucks if you do your countertops too. Did you know you can paint countertops? It's so fun, I've done several. So I hope that you guys will check that out. You don't even need a coupon. You just go right to our site, heirloomtraditionspaint.com and pick out your colors, and when you add it to your cart, it's gonna automatically make them that sale price, and that ends Monday in honor of Labor Day. So I hope you guys enjoy your weekend, and I was using the Syntec chalk brush, always. Uh-oh, hold on, a few more questions coming through. Restore coat line, are any of these colors the same as the all-in-one? Okay, so on the restore coat line, you guys know that is retiring. We just, the confusion of having two different brands, even though they are the same paint, is just, um, confusing to you guys, to my customer service girls, uh, to us and our story that we're telling. So it is all the same paint, it always has been. We've been upfront about that. We just had the Restore Coat line branded uh, for automotive and a little more manly so that men would believe us that they could use it on their muscle cars to paint the interior in their leather and vinyl, right? Um, but we are gonna retire those colors because we just decided that uh, it's just easier for us to have all one brand of paint that does it all, and it really does it all. So uh, the colors that are overlapping between those two lines are the black, so Restore Coat Black and Iron Gate, the exact same color, and the red, so Monarchy and Restore Coat Red, exact same color. Now Bone and Oyster are coming over to the all-in-one paint line, and they're gonna be in that label, and they are now available in samples and pints. So. Um, I know a lot of you guys are really excited about Bone being available in sample, so that's up there on the website now, and it is on sale this weekend, so check that out. Uh, colors that are going away. Meadow Sweet and Thistle from the All-in-One Paint line. 
we had to take those off of the color card to make room for bone and oyster. So I hope that you guys will agree that that's a good switch, although I love those two colors personally. Um, I think many more people need bone and oyster because those are cabinet colors and those are uh, great colors for leather and vinyl as well. This old meadow suite, probably not a lot of people paint in kitchens or their leather sofa in that. So uh, I think that's a good switch. And then in the restore coat line, you're gonna be losing blue, restore coat blue, cause it's very similar to polo. Um, you're gonna be losing the tan. You're gonna be losing, um, I'm trying to think of all the color names this late on a Saturday. Um, help me out here. Saddle. And I'm drawing a total blank. I can't remember without a list in front of me and I don't have a color card in front of me. So, um, but all the Restore Coat colors are going away except for Bone and Oyster, which are coming over to the Restore Coat line. So um, get those while you can. They're good through this weekend. After this weekend, they're gonna start going on limited quantity and we're just gonna sell the remainder of what we have and then those colors are gonna be totally retired. So if you're in the middle of a project with any of the Restore Coat colors or with Meadow Sweet or Thistle, definitely order this weekend, stock up, make sure you have plenty for your project. Um, it is on the website. It is noted that it is a retiring color. So um, everybody hopefully knows and we're trying to say it as much as we can and talk about it as much as we can here in the group. So um, get yourself some extra. If you love those colors, stock up. Can't have too much. It doesn't go bad. Store it indoors, uh, inside your home with the lid on. It'll last for years. So let's see. Carrie wants to know how much Mediterranean did I need for my walls? I think this was six quarts, I believe. So you can see it's good size. I'm glad I hope I'm not showing you guys any messes here. I know my dining room's clean, but I don't know what else you're seeing. <laughs> so that took, let's see, it's all the way up there too. That took, I think six quarts, yeah. Gayla, I'm so happy you enjoyed this. Let's see if I got any other questions. Did I mean canvas cloth? Um, Chris, no, it's actually kind of a burlapy material here on the chairs. It is a drop cloth. It's probably not technically burlap, but um, like a canvas, I guess, yeah. Not technically burlap, but a nice, pretty gray taupey color. And it just works with these chairs perfectly, I think, so. There's pretty antiquing down the side there. All right, girls, I'm gonna get off and I'm gonna go find out who won the derby. I never saw, did anybody, did anybody comment to me? Paula says it's cotton canvas, there you go. She, since she uh, did them all, she should know, right? <laughs> Let's see, somebody asked a question, I just saw it. Yes, weathered wood on the chairs. Yes, the Restore Coat Gray, that's another one. It's very close to Stonehenge, so it's just a little bit darker version of Stonehenge, so since we had something already pretty comparable in the all-in-one paint line, that one's gonna be going, yes. Uh, what do you recommend for a refrigerator that would look stainless? I don't think you could get a color that's actually stainless like um, from the um, from the all-in-one paint line. Cathedral to me is a steel gray. It's got some blue undertone to it, much like stainless does. It's gonna be a little bit darker, but I think that would be a great, great option for a refrigerator. And if I were gonna try to be going for that look, that's probably the one that I would choose. So um, refrigerators are super fun to paint. It makes such a big transition. Um, changes the look totally so super fun so i hope that you guys will try that uh lenina it was coliseum on the chairs authentic one i wonder if we bet on him i have no idea who we bet on brian took care of all that so all right guys i'm gonna let you go thank you so much for being on here with me this was super fun and uh i can't wait to see all of your projects that you've been putting off that you're gonna paint now so post them in the group for us. Uh, if you need the link to the group or to get yourself a free sample, just comment here and we will post that for you. And we hope to see you over there. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Happy Labor Day. Bye.